welcome to Beyond Tomorrow. This is where we talk about all things sustainability from around the world, including sustainable products, sustainable processes, new projects and technologies that are being developed, and products that are on the market that you and I can buy. All the things that are related to sustainability, to the environment, and of course, climate change. So, let's jump right into it and have a look at the news. Berkeley Earth, a not-for-profit organisation based in California, has determined that 2019 was the second hottest on record since the 1850s. It's also investigated local temperatures, and it's found that 52% of areas around the world are experiencing temperatures which are considered very high. Under normal stable climate conditions, that would be the equivalent of 2.5%. So that's a significant increase. They also determined that the total temperature change since the pre-industrial average was about 1.4 degrees. So we're already on track to being out of control when it comes to climate change. 2019 was a really interesting year for the UK in terms of clean energy. They were able to produce 48.5% of their electricity from clean sources, which is solar, wind, also nuclear. I know it's controversial to include nuclear in there, but it is a technology that doesn't emit carbon dioxide. 43% of their electricity was sourced from fossil fuels, including oil and gas and coal. And the balance was made up with uh, what seems to be an increasingly controversial topic, of biomass bio and biomatter, which is essentially burning wood chips from trees. Now briefly on the nuclear energy industry, in 2019 we saw six nuclear power stations around the world commissioned, but nine decommissioned. There seems to be a waning appetite for nuclear power stations around the world. In 2019 there was an equivalent of five gigawatts installed, compare that to 2018 which was double that, about 10 gigawatts. Now, speaking of the oil and gas industry, 2019 was a bumper year for them in terms of exploration. They found 26 new deposits of oil or gas, which have the equivalent of over 100 billion barrels, barrels of oil each. It just goes to show that the oil and gas reserves are probably not gonna run out anytime soon. So we have to come up with and fight for policies around the world that motivate these oil and gas companies to leave the reserves in the ground and not burn them. I know it's gonna to be tough because it's energy, right? It's, it's liquid energy. But if we are gonna solve this climate change challenge, we're gonna to have to figure out a way to make sure that that carbon stays in the ground. In an interesting turn of events, the British royal family has waded into the deep end when it comes to the climate change debate. They unveiled the Earthshot Prize. Prince William announced that there'll be a number of challenges set up over the coming months and years to solve things like energy, climate change, ecosystems, biodiversity, and a number of other aspects of sustainability around the world. Keele University in the UK has launched a really interesting project called High Deploy. The aim is to inject hydrogen directly into the natural gas supply around the university to test out the compatibility of a blended hydrogen and natural gas fuel used for heating buildings and hot water. If successful, this would have a significant impact on the safety and also the ability to roll out hydrogen as a fuel around the world. Remembering that burning hydrogen only produces water. If successful and rolled out across the UK, the university has estimated that it would take about six megatons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere every year. That's the equivalent of 2.5 million cars off the road. A significant impact. A slight change of tact, the University of New South Wales in Australia has discovered a new way of extracting a nanocellulose from banana plants. That means after the bananas are harvested, which only account for about 12% of the total mass of the plant, you can take the rest of the banana plant, convert it into nanocellulose, and turn it into plastics, bioplastics, that are much better for the environment than plastics produced through petrochemicals. So, thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the brief update on sustainable technology and developments from around the world. 
If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up icon just below. Also, if you want to see more of this content, consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notifications every time I put new content up. Thanks for staying informed. And don't forget, the world can be a better place as long as we think beyond tomorrow.